Okay, that appears to be recording. All right. So what we would like to do next is uh, attempt for everyone in the classroom to connect to the Edison server. And again, the Edison web server is where you will be uploading your web pages so you can send the link to me or to anyone else, essentially uh, to the world, if you will. Um, and some of you, is anyone using their own host? Yes. Okay, a couple of you, so you can just, um, I guess, practice if you like or just can't type. But for the most part, probably you haven't done this before. So Edison is the school server. We had some issues now. I have understood all the steps as they changed them, um, how to connect now this quarter. And so to make a connection with Edison, um, so now I'd like everyone to work with me and pay attention. You need to use the FTP client tool called FileZilla, which is installed on your machines. Um, if it's not showing up here in your taskbar, then you can search for it. And it's called again FileZilla. And then you're going to start up the application. Okay, I got your email by the way, I'll get back to you. Yeah. All right, so this is FileZilla and who, who, will, who will remind us what is the use of FileZilla? What do we use this application for? FTP. FTP, we use it for file transfer protocol to transfer our files from our local machine to the web server. In this case, the web server is Edison, but it's used for anything. So it's more of a general purpose tool, all right? But before we can upload the files, we need to actually set up the connections. So here is what we need to do. Uh, let me start to magnify so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to go to, this is very difficult for me, you can see. The magnify, I know it makes easier for you to see, but it's hard for me to see them. Um, so go to File, Site Manager, and then you can start a new site. And you, it turns out that you can have more than one, right? You can, if you have several different domains where you're plotting files, you can have multiple sites here. Uh, I already have this one created, but for you, you're going to say New Site, right? Uh, you can also give it a name. So it's, uh, I don't want to use this, cancel. So this is the, the step you need to do, but I, I have already done this step. So when you open your new site, the host, your host will be blank. And this is where you're going to type, and you have to be very careful to type exactly as shown here, the name of your host, which is the web server, edison.seattlecentral.edu. And you want to keep the case the same, and you don't want to make any typos. So make sure to get this correct, right? So that's your host name. We're going to leave the port blank for now. And then next is the protocol, uh, which is, um, there are two options. We can use file transfer protocol or secure uh, file transfer protocol with this server we can only use FTP, so you have to select here, you will select the FTP option, okay? And then encryption, there are several options, and right now the way this server is configured, the only one we can use is the plain FTP. If you have a server somewhere outside of the school, you will not select this option, but this is what you select here, and that also means that you you generally use this server for your assignments and such, but you know, don't put anything private or sensitive on there since it's not a secure connection. Okay, then the login type you're going to change is probably um, anonymous, uh, change it to normal, and then put your username that we just obtained from the EAD, and then your password. And after that, we're going to say connect. 
And let's see if this works. It worked yesterday. Is this password the one that we used to connect to the login? Lock? Yeah, it's the same password. And so if things went well, then you'll get a directory listing of the root directory successful. You might have a typo or something else. You might have a red error message. So I'm going to pause here for a second. And let's make sure that uh, everyone's um, logons are working. So uh, here's file zero. You want to start it? There you go. Yeah, you don't want to do the update. And uh, go ahead and. Did you write down the information there, Zeke? Yes. Okay, I'm working on this. Yeah. All right. You can set up a new, if you, you can do a quick connect actually as well. But if you set up on your site, it will be saved there for you. Um, all right, so let's see here. Issues? Are you sure? So the good news is you're going to get an error message that can help you tell us for the documents. It looks like you um, either your password or the document for the server copy. So just the first and the last time. So just try again. So it looks like the, now that things are working, we'll have some hands up, it's pretty easy. Um, Some hands back here. Yeah. Uh, oh. The one is incorrect. Um, I don't know. Try the upper case. I think it might be. Case it works for me. I'm sorry? It works for me. If you yeah. change the case? Yeah. Okay, so try changing the case. Yeah. And also, if, uh, make sure your password is correct. I know I restart my password all the time. So if that doesn't work, read really, really. it. All right? And you? I got it. Okay. I think it is case sensitive, at least as far as Edison is concerned, you need to keep the case, okay? So that's that. Anyone else? Issues? Sure? Sure? All right, so let me look your, um, look at your makers um, S capitals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is your password correct? Okay. Yeah. okay. So now it looks like. Um, so long the machine. Yeah. Well, put those uppercase just to see. I know that students are able to get in. So the first letter is uppercase. I don't think you can get. You just set it up like that with two dots. It should be just. Uh, I mean, however, you it should be just first name, not last name. It doesn't give. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think it gives an initial. Just let it, yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, you are going to create, a, we are, a simple HTML page that we're going to upload. But we just need a couple more seconds here to make sure that students are following. Okay, so what are you working on? Let's see. Um, all right, so go to, um, you connect? Yeah, you connect. Okay, so you're good. Just uh, stand by and we'll do the next step. Are you connected? Yeah, I, I have stuff on the server already. My only issue, I don't know if it's a problem with my laptop, but I can't overwrite files by dragging them. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember this. Uh, that's something new. You have to delete and then replace it. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's new. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I was surprised to see that. I know it was failing transfer. Yeah, so we are going to encounter this. 
Yeah, I guess I should get a part of this to do on. I was just really happy to. I wonder if we could like just name it, put like a one or a two or a three yeah. after and upload it and then delete the previous one just in case. You That's know, just not the way it should be, but yeah. Yeah, I had right. an issue. It should be all right. It should be all right. Okay, so now I think um, okay. most of you are in. And um, if you can't log in uh, at all, then maybe your password is not correct or your username. So I'll start back. Do you have a smartphone on you? No. Um, you can maybe, uh, if that's okay, and then go to that tools.seattlecolleges.edu and then see if you can, but that's what you need to get done. Yeah. Yeah, I want to show you, I do have some stuff already. So, uh, is what's happening? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's you didn't, um, you more. were able to yeah. activate your account? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to do it. Yeah, I have stuff, but it's just a paid to have this. Yeah, I'll talk to, to yeah. Dylan and see if he can. Yes. So I think he just maybe didn't know again. that it's doing that. And it was yeah, it. I'll make a note. Actually, All right, so our next step is going to be to create uh, our first yeah. index.html file. So let's do that way. So put your signature in. It could take up to 10 minutes, though, but it hasn't been normal. But it could and then we're going to upload it to the server. All right, and which, uh, which tool did we say we use for? Creating a way for creating HTML pages. What are we using? Brackets. brackets. So let's go ahead and start up brackets. So I get it. I have it on click not tab. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So you should have brackets on your machine, and you start it. Uh, and then, actually, I would like you to do it. Try to do from scratch a little page, and then your page should say, hello, welcome to my site, or just something simple, right? So write yourself a page from scratch if you remember. See if you remember how to do this. And you can pick here, I guess. We just want something very basic because we are just trying to upload to the server, right? This is not the time for us to write a lengthy page. We'll do this later. Before we cancel out of it, yeah, cancel out of it. So your file would look something like that. <coughs> there is something else. Yeah, okay. If you have something out there, what happens is there are other, and this is the default actually the brackets, or somebody else might have used it. So you want to just close this by exit it out. Close it. Uh, save file, close, hold, and close all of And then save file new. And now you can wait. And then you can save it somewhere that you know where it is. You can, you can. Just save your own. There can be many index of HTML files. All right. And so once you created your first file, then we need to save it. What happens if it doesn't show up with the coloring as it should? That means that you haven't saved it yet. So when you save it with .html extension, that's okay. when you get the coloring, Thanks. which is very nice. And then um, if you like, you can preview here. So this is just a live preview to see what your page looks like. Okay. Try again. Oh, hang on, I need to get out of this and see. This is really unfortunate. So the uh, something has happened since last time I was here, and now um, brackets is not connected with the Chrome browser. 
So the preview right now as it is will not work. But anyway, we'll, we'll come back to this later. So once you have your file, save it somewhere so you know where to find it. So for example, uh, you can save it on the desktop or just somewhere that you know where it is. And then after the file is saved, we're going to come back to FileZilla and hopefully we're still connected. And then we're going to now show how to upload from the local to the server. And for this, you need to find, okay, so take a look first of all. I guess I have to take out the magnifier. So FileZilla is going to have two panes, right? So you remember we watched the video last time. The left side here, do you remember what it represents? That's the files on the computer. There's the files on the computer. And the right side is going to represent the server. So right now the server, yours probably has nothing. Mine has one index of HTML from yesterday when I was playing. And our goal now is to get this index from the local and drag it over so that the dragging over is going to make it post to the server. Okay, so I'm going to delete the one I have here just so we're on the same page. Okay, and now it's very easy. Once you're connected, all you have to do is you have to take, select your page or uh, sorry, right, the page or the files or folder that you want to upload, and then you drag them over. And now the file is on the server. Now, um, Sometimes, do you have a question? Sure, sure. Um, I was slow down and I was going to talk. Depending on your host, some hosts are going to tell you that you have to put your index in a specific folder. So just until last quarter in this Edison, we had to use public underscore HTML, but they changed it. And now they're telling us to put it in the root folder. So we just drag it, this is the root folder. All right, so I'll slow down then and maybe walk around to make sure that everyone was able to drag the file from left to right and then you have an index HTML there, right? You have to find a file. I don't know where it is. So that's why I was suggesting to it on desktop. Can go back here? Um, the desktop is already Yeah, yeah. So just drive it. Yeah, it's best practice, but it's right now. So that's better than not. So, um, what can you say? Oh, yeah, no, no. I'm good. It's just like. Okay, I'll go slower. But I think that you maybe you feel behind on it. No, sometimes, no, I mean, I appreciate the feedback. I was just so bad. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to know because I've done it, and so it's not like I'm going to go to the right place. Yeah. 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 Okay, so did anyone take issues of errors driving the folder? The part of the page? <laughs> Oh, I think that might be one of the machines that was actually somebody else who logged out, or turned it off, and then got the machine. Okay, and it might take a few minutes. Then, if you can log in, maybe you can. Who wanted to do it? Can watch over your shoulder so you can. So let me magnify again, and you can see. Now we have the same file in index.html and also showing up here. How about on this side? Any issues? No. Are you able to get the Yeah. Thank you very much. But it won't let us do it on the desktop. Some of the machines, I think, have issues. Can you remove the extension of HTML? You have to say dot HTML just to be sure because you know, there are different types. 
So in Chrome, so the link to your site is going to be edison.seattlecentral.edu slash tilde. The tilde is to make this tilde uh, uh, character here, you're going to do shift is the key above the tab, all right? And then again, like e, your EAD login, first name dot last name, and then enter. And in my case, I have the page I just made is here. So this is a success. And also I can say index.html. If I didn't say that, it just new to default to the index page that was uploaded. Uh, so you can or you, you may omit index.html. If you have a different page, then you're going to need to specify the page name. All right, so that's your next step to make sure that your file shows up. And so this is how you're going to send me a link to your homework, right? We want to create a different file, assignment one, and you send me a link to Canvas, you submit a link. And um, I think later this week, or next, I think later this week I'll show you how to actually put links on the page so you can have your assignments, let's say, is links from one page. Does this make sense? Right. But now let's work on this step. How about you do? You got it? Okay, sure. Are you in Chrome? No, Shaggy. Yeah, so okay. I, know I don't really want to impose the technology choice on you. That's I right. strongly believe not to do that, but I think your life might be easier if you use Chrome right now. And that might be a different issue, but I still think you have a better chance to get it right. I think it was actually the other day, so. You need to get the, oh, the sign. Right. What does your folder look like? So that's not Chrome. No, your folder where you're at. Oh, but you don't have an index. Okay. So you name your file. Okay. Please. Okay. So it's important. You have to have at least one index.html. So if you name your file something else, then that's probably the issue. Or we can even rename it. So your file, you have to always have an index.html or PHP, let's say HTML, uh, it's on that server, and then you can have additional files. All right? So the same thing with your name to name. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Classes, so they all going to want in the HTML. So how do we do this? Well, in the root folder where we are right now, we're going to have our file, and that's what we have done so far. Right now, in the root folder, we have in the HTML. Now, what I'll say is that what you can do is the following, and I'll show you how to go. You're going to create. You can also upload folders, not just files. So you can make a folder web 110, a folder web 120, or whatever you're taking. And then in the web 110 folder, you can have your assignment. So if it requires you to have an index, you can have index.html here. So that's a different index. And the way you're going to make the difference is that um, for this one, you actually, the folder name becomes part of the path on the URL. So actually, let's do this next, right? So let's do this hands-on, yeah. It's Brian, but it's first name, don't last name, right? Yeah, first name, don't last name. I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about, but about, you know, this was brand new to me too, as you know, so we're learning all about the new EAG accounts here. All right, so let's say that we're going to create a folder for Web 110, and you can put your uh, homework for Web 110 in this folder. And again, just to stress, though, you do always have to have a in basic index HTML in the root folder. Okay, so now um, I'm going to create... And I'll, I'll do this on a desktop. Usually you want to move this on your flash drive, but just for today, since we're learning and it's easy to find from here. So I'm going to go on the desktop, and I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to name it Web 110. And make sure to, to use a lowercase. No spaces between the words. If you want spaces, you can use a dash. But no spaces in the names of the files or the folders. So now we have a folder web 110. Unless we don't have a permission, which would be very frustrating. Let's see. Right, so if um, it looks like it's fine, it's allowing me to create a web 110 folder. And you all have that now. All right, so now let's go in brackets. 
And then, um, so hello from Web 110. This was actually a good index for that folder. Um, this we are, and then we can just add something. So we, we know that we are, this is a different index. And then you can say, my name is, you know, whatever your name is, and I am taking Web 110. It doesn't matter. There's just some, some sample text. Uh, and I'll say here teaching. Okay. And then save this file as also is index.html, except you're going to save it inside the Web 110 folder, right? And I'd like you all to do this with me. And if you have issues, you raise your hand. So now on the desktop, we have a folder, Web 110, and inside this folder, there is index.html. So back to FileZilla. If I click on my desktop, essentially, as you can see, it's reflecting the desktop inside the FileZilla. And now I, I have the Web 110 folder. Inside it, there is an index.html. Okay. Okay, so back to the desktop. And now what we're going to do is, and I guess I'll slow down. But uh, take the time to have to arrive here at this spot where you, you see Web 110 in FileZilla with your fold, with your index HTML inside it. And then our next step is going to be to drag the folder and the index to the other side. But I'll pause for a moment so you can catch up. We're putting those files on the server, right? So I'm going to grab the Web 110 folder. Oh, and I was going to say, if you're not seeing the Web 110 or your new folder says you make them, you may need to refresh the viewing files. You know. So if you just create it, it might not show up until you refresh. Just try this. All right, so grab this and then drag to the other side. And now we have... We have the index.html and the web 110 here, right? And if I open the web 110 folder, I have another index.html. So how can we tell the difference between the two index files? We do so by changing the structure of the URL. Um, so if I wanted to get to the one inside web 110, what you have to do is you have to tell it the path, the directory. Um, and so what do you think we need to add here to find this directory? The folder names. 
But we need to add a folder name, which is Web 110. And it's case sensitive as far as I know, it used to be. So just be, I just again want to stress, be case sensitive so you can make your life easier. And now, um, Web 110 index.html. And sure enough, that's the different index. And then you can do the same for your other classes. You can create a folder and then, you know, you can have indexes in each of the subfolders. You don't have to. In fact, let's just for fun create a different file and put it in this folder with a different name. So we're going to add, uh, verify that this works for you. And then we're going to create something with the arbitrary name, which is test.html. And then make sure that the Put this up and again verify that it's there. Okay. So, do you have any question on the structure of the files? I mean, it's pretty. I think it's pretty. Yeah. Just have to remember to always keep an index file. We both set up there, so the, the server people used to put the index of PHP. So, when you log in, you get some of that. But right now, you have to make one for it. You use forward slashes between file folder names, and you can have, you know, you can have many subfolders, and then you just have to keep on adding it here, and then eventually you have to have a, um, you know, the name of the file. And as I mentioned, if you have index.html, it's going to display it by default, as you can see, because I removed it and it still works. But. No Just a second. So if you're done with this so far, and you can see index HTML, create another HTML file and name it test.html and put it in the Web 110 folder, please. Yeah, we're going to make another file, and this time it won't be called index, it's going to be called test. You can actually name it anything. Yes. Okay. So here's the problem you don't have a. Why do you have a folder here? Yeah, I think that's absolutely okay. And you guys are not seeing the uh, you're not seeing the you know, you can access the first one and you can access the folder. Make a promise. Okay, so I only two things. So we want to make sure we're at 
So let's create a folder. Sorry, not a folder. We're working on creating another file. In another folder. We can just put it in the web 110 folder. We're just playing around right now. And just give it a different content so that you when you when your page loads, you can see that it, you know, it's different. So what I've been doing is I'm just save as. Right? That's the quickest way. You can save as, change the name, and then change the content. This is the best folder file. Also, the folders in the web space, you're going to hear them referred to as directories. So if you hear somebody say what directory is your file in, what they mean is what in which folder is your file. Okay, this is the best file, the best page, I should say. Okay. And then save it, and then go through the steps to again refresh your FileZilla so you can see the new file you added in Web 110. And then you can drag it over. And when you do, then it's going to show. And then verify by going to web110 slash test.html. And then um, you should see your new page. Okay. So one thing was that I suggested for you to want to use your face and name. You should rename the folders. You can do this from here, actually. Either way, it's the same. I don't mind that we should call it. But is it gonna is it also gonna refresh in the documents? No. Because I have to refresh it in there, don't I? Yeah. Or I have to read it. Yeah, so and then I can have a copy of the Okay, so you can delete files just by deleting, it's pretty easy. And now what are you trying to do? Sorry, I wanted to... Oh, just the test out. one? But you put it outside the web on test. And you can just drag it in and it should work. Okay. Oh, and now we're testing the function. So again, a lot of information, but try to use lowercase for the names. Is it not working? We had a space. Like no spaces. Well, people saying this. No spaces, lowercase for your names. Okay. If you want to connect multiple words, use a dash. But no spaces and no uppercase. All right, so that's working. Also, I was going to show you something else. Um, let's see. I'm going to get you guys absolutely from right now. And then whenever it was on the end of the and then it's flat in the No All right, so I want to show you something else. So very commonly, when you work with web with files, you're going to need to um, replace the existing file with a new file, right? So you made some changes and you need to upload from the local machine to the server. Normally, when this happens, you're going to be prompted to overwrite the file, but for some reason, the way this is set up right now is it's not allowing you to overwrite. At least yesterday, it wasn't. So let's say I made some changes. Actually, I will make some changes. Um, so this is my 
Let's see, this is my test page. And so it is, this is the test page. So I'm going to make a change to my test page. This is test page version two. And I'm saving it, which is saving it again locally on my desktop. And now I want this to be the page displayed on the site. So what I'm going to do is drag the test from the local to, uh, to replace the one on the server. And normally, when you see the screen and you click overwrite, it will overwrite. And actually, it might be working now. Yes, it was. Yeah, it's working? No. I'm testing it now. Yeah, uh, so, okay, that's what happened yesterday. So, the fail, what is telling me down here is that I have a transfer error. So, that doesn't work. It, normally, you won't have this issue. We have it with the server right now. And then, so what you have to do is actually delete the file on the server and then drag the new one. Normally, you should not have to do this, and I will try to remember to check uh, with them about it. So I deleted it on the server side, and then I'm going to drag my new version. And now, if I go to my page and check, you should see here is a version 2 of the file. Okay. All right. You can have folders within folders, so you can essentially mirror whatever your directory structure is from the hard disk from your desktop or wherever you're using it to the server, right? So you can have a lot more rich structures than what we have here. And also, uh, we've been just playing from the desktop, but what you actually want to do is you want to use your file drive probably, and then create your um, folder, say web110, and then start accumulating all your project files in that folder. Take it home, work on it, and then bring it back, work here, upload. Um, so I recommend you do this, um, because otherwise when we leave here, I don't know what's going to happen with those machines. Um, we cannot, I'm sure of one thing, you cannot count on your work to be here next time because they reimage them and so on. Does this make sense? Right. So if you want to save even the files from today as a reference, then you should put them on your file drive. And um, save them and then, you know, be able to transport back and forth. So if you have a flash drive, it should show, I'm sure you all have used flash drive, but it should show up here. And then you can copy the files on your flash drive. I don't need to show you this, right? How to use a flash drive. All right. So I think we have enough now to be able to upload our homework and other files, do you think? Okay. Then what we're going to do is, um, let's take our first 10 minute break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about chapter three, which is lists, how to make lists. So let's take a 10 minute break. I wonder if the recording is still going. Does it have time? That's true. I have to be on the She is on the weekend. I mean, it's not a big deal for me. I mean, it's yeah. Like, if I prompt you, nothing comes up. Let me look to see if I could hear if I put the message. Oh, yes, it does get it. Yes, so you can double click. And you can only see it while we're here. Yeah.
I think it might be a commission error again that it's thrown up. I would not be surprised. That's what I Googled, and that's what it was telling me. That's what I'm doing right now. I think the solution is to install Chrome for multiple user accounts. That's what I'm reading. Can we do that though? No. We can, but I'm going to have to put a ticket, I think, for that. There are Chrome Yeah, but it's not probably for multiple user accounts. It's not Chrome is not connecting properly with brackets. So we can use it for preview, which is, we really would like to be able to do this. Is it working? But it's personal, so. Okay, so I guess this is a, a solution. Is this Chrome or what is this? I guess that's Edge. You can, um, I'll show you when we come back, but you can do a, enable experimental live preview and this would allow it to work with other browsers. So you can do that so you can have a preview of this with Edge. So file, enable experimental live preview. Okay. Um, but we need to have, we we'll probably need to get help from me to get this work on com as it should. Okay, except I can't get Edge to load up. It doesn't work at all on this machine. It does not oh, pop open at all. This machine is, I need to, I don't, <laughs> can't keep track of all the problems. Yeah. Yet, so. So you don't have it? Nope. Well, uh, I guess we can maybe um, see if we can test Firefox now. Let's it up. I don't know if they'll, I don't think it'll work with Firefox. There's questions. But I don't know if it's installed. Well, because it de it's defaulting to Edge. It's what happens right, when right. I yeah, yeah. try to click it. Yeah, unless you get one that makes it because they didn't install Edge. It's like, cool. No, no Firefox on this one either. Yeah, there is. But it's under. Um, Oh, uh, Mozilla. Oh, check under M. Oh. Yeah, it should be. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So how would you like Chrome and Google? Yeah. How do I get that to work with the experimental? Well, I think that if you have the browser open and not try, try, yeah, it should. Okay. Now I'm pretty good. Yeah. I don't know how this works. Is it? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's somehow set to edge. Sorry. That's okay. So there was a link up for the book, but I don't see it now. It's so real. All right, I think it's time for us to continue. Two o'clock. Yeah. So, um, 
Okay, so, so I am having issues, and I think maybe all of us, with normally when you launch the preview, you should be able to launch the Chrome browser. However, that's not happening now. Um, I think we have to ask Need to work on the permissions. What you can do is enable experimental live preview, and then you should be able to have a preview with Edge. Actually, it's not working right now again. Here we go. Okay, actually, it's not launching for me right now either. I will talk with me to solve this. So that's a bit of a problem. What's happening? Oh, um, she's trying to get the experiment. I would like to use, I would like all of us to be able to use the live preview, which is one of the reasons we use brackets, but it's not launching Chrome in the, right now. Can you launch Edge preview on your brackets? Can you try this? Right yeah, on the, of course. All right, so for now, let's leave it like that. Um, and shift gears a bit. Okay, actually, before I talk about lists, so your first homework was to create a page with information about yourself, and then you will use the headings that, and paragraph tags to format it a little bit, and then you need to upload it to the Web 1.10 folder on the server. Does anyone have any questions about this? All right, I moved the homework to be due on Thursday, so you need to do so before Thursday and then submit the link. All right? Okay, all right. So then let's talk about making lists in uh, HTML. Okay, so so what is a list and when does it make sense? Well, when you have, when your content is appropriate for you to make a list on the page, there is a special HTML you can use so you can organize the lists, right? Some examples of lists, for example, a, a recipe for cooking potatoes, mashed potatoes, would be a list because there are steps that you need to follow. And order is important, so we call this an ordered type list, right? And you have five steps here. If you're just going shopping, it doesn't really matter in what order you put the shopping list normally. So this is called an order list. It doesn't have numbers. It will have bullets to just indicate this is either the five items or however many that I need to purchase. And then sometimes you have what is called the definition list, which will you define, for example, uh, sashimi or scale, and then you put some more content pertaining to this definition. So these are the three types of lists, and we're going to learn how to create those in HTML. So of course, in HTML, everything is governed by tags. And so the tags for creating an ordered list are going to be OL. And then 
Each list item is going to be under the LI tag. So I think that it's good already to start working and putting some of this in a on a page instead of just looking at it. <clears throat> do you want me to write the, the pages with you, or are you okay to just do this from the tags here? This is okay. So what I'll say is don't try to make the whole big list, just make the OL and then add one list item. So you're going to open the OL tag and close it, and then you're going to open the list item and close it. So start with one. And it doesn't even have to be a long chopped potatoes, just put item one, for example, in there. Are you guys still in the question? Maybe I'll do it with you. Um, so you have to have to add this to my the second one on page. Sure, if you want to. They still have to set up the basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just add the content to make sense, right? Okay, yeah. I wrote it to make sense. So then it's going to sign your head. So I'll go ahead and I think, I think, I think for the time being, it might make sense for me to also do this with you. All right, so for example, oil, and then this item, item one. I'm going to do this in the test for a test file. So normally we should be able to preview and the preview doesn't seem to work. So if we wanted to preview our page, what do we have to do? We just have to post it, which is not such a big problem. So I'm going to, um, and remember if you're replacing a page, you have to delete right now. So I added a couple of these items and uh, let's see here if I uploaded it. I have item one and item two now on my page, and they're numbered. Okay, so this was the, you want to do this for yourself, right? Is everyone able to create an order list? Do you have any questions? Anyone issues as you move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to show you that. So we had three types. So the first one was, was the order list. And then note that pretty much for most, but not all tags in HTML, if you open the tag, you have to close it. And the slash is how you close it. It's the same tag, but they use slash to close it. And then when we put one tag inside another tag, we call this nesting, so we are nesting the tags. And again, list li for list item, and then slash to close, right? How about unordered list, the one that has the bullets, right? So this is going to look like so. And uh, go ahead and now add to your file ul, to your page rather, 
and then add a couple of list items, and then they should display with bullet points rather than with numbers. And there's the second type of list. So what you can do perhaps is the following. You can add a paragraph or H2. And then you're going to say ordered list. And then you put your ordered list here. And then the next one is going to be an ordered list. And the tag for the unordered list is UL. And then inside this again, list items, item one. Maybe we should give them different names here. Ordered item one. And since we don't have preview, I'll just drag it over again to the server. Refresh. Oh. Oh, Remember, you have to delete. So if your change didn't show up, maybe your file transfer failed. Anyone having any issues? Okay, just a sec. I'll be right All right, so basically right now I'm doing more of a lecture. Can I get your attention, everyone? When I'm doing a lecture, I'm going to be doing more talking, and we're going to have a lab time, which is open for you to talk with each other and help each other and ask, like, different questions kind of beyond the topic. But um, right now, we are mostly trying to work on this. All right. So let's see here. So you added the unordered list, and then the next one that we're going to try to add Oh, and this shows something interesting. Um, so you can see here how the spacing is a little bit off and it's not orderly between the list items. That doesn't look good, but actually from point of view of HTML, that's not a problem because the white space is uh, ignored between the tags. So you can 
the code can look like that and it will not be a problem as far as how it's going to display. Okay, this was probably not on purpose, but um, if, if it is like that, it's not actually going to affect the display of the page. Okay, and so this is the definition list. Uh, the definition list, you have a couple of different tags that you have to put together. So you have a DL for the definition list and within the DL, you have uh, the title, which is in this case, sashimi. And then the DD is going to be the content pertaining to this title, right? So you have a nested tags within tags within tags. Does this make sense? All right. So go ahead and give a try of making your own definition list with sashimi or something else with an item or two and then upload it to your page. And then after this, I'm going to actually take a look to make sure that you have, I would like you to show me your page is uploaded with displaying those three different types of lists that we learned about. Okay, so I'm going to add a couple as well. You can so you can try to do it on your own, but if you need to take a look, then it's available up here in the file. And you probably notice that bracket is going to close the tags for you automatically, so you don't have to do it yourself. What does it mean? The what does it mean? It's just helping you out. How do you make it stop doing that? Because yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it's, I mean, I generally like it, but you could play with the settings. I've never. Well, because there is an option for auto close braces, but it doesn't yeah, stop it. Right. <laughs> I think overall it's a good help, but sometimes it's overly eager. So yeah, I haven't looked this up. If you look it up, you can post it under the discussion. Um, so anyway, I just know that it will close it for you. Um, so you, you don't have to close it yourself. So this is where we should be Oops, for this exercise. And go ahead and upload. Actually, in a way, it's OK if the brackets pretty doesn't work, so you can practice according to the so. server. And you can add, you know, with this, I added just a couple. You can add for your main items. Oh, I'm trying to see how much you put that question. Oh, 
that um, we don't have Chrome and I mean you might it might be the case because some of these machines seem to be incomplete but if you don't see it here it doesn't mean it's not installed right it just means you have to go and search here so for example Mozilla you have to search under the name of oh it's not going right and Mark so Google okay um, well so Firefox well, yeah Mozilla you And if it doesn't show up here, then you can also look under all apps, right? So let's see if it's under M. So here it is. And then if you like using it, then you can start it and maybe pin it to your taskbar. But just so you know, there are a lot more apps available than the ones that are pinned on your taskbar. Okay, so let's see, was everyone able to finish this? I'm going to just make a note for me that most of the sessions are not touched on it. Yeah. It's all lined up. Okay, so I guess I have one more exercise for us. Did you get your page of Why? Because you are doing the local. This is, this is, if it says file, that means you're getting not the one from the server, but the one from this. So the one you want to call is the one that gets Edison in the name. Do you know what I mean? So you, um, so you have to actually go to the browser, and then you get to type. Edison dot the same as models mean model yeah but the same as you uh, know and that's the link box. Okay. 
Okay, so I have just one more exercise for us to do, which is to create what we call a nested list. So a nested list is going to be a list within a list. And what does it look like? Well, for example, you will have different types of pastries and then you have a sub subcategory of pastries such as croissants and so on. So to make this look with a um, sub list, we're going to create a nested list. So here is the code. So this is, in this case, it works with other types of lists too, but this is an unordered list, so UL. And then first you have the mousses, so they're in their own list, and they show separate. The pastries is the second list, and then essentially you put another unordered list inside, which is going to allow it to display uh, inside the other folder. And uh, let me see something here. And then the tarts is going to be the last one, right? So let's go ahead and write this. Uh, I will write it with you. Create a nested list and then upload it and we'll wrap up for today uh, after that. We can continue working with the same uh, test file if you like. All right, so first of all, I'm going to add a heading here to here saying that this is a nested list. List. And you see that the way, the order in which we type on the page, the same sequence displays on the page. So it's sequential in the display, right? Whatever we took, we put on top is the first to display, and then this is the, the last one. So here we have a UL, an ordered list. And inside the ordered list, we're going to have a list item with mousses. I guess I'll use the same example. And then we have another one with uh, pastries. But now we need to, um, we need to nest the second list inside this one. So after the paste is here, I'm going to put another UL, another list. And I suggest that you, actually, uh, I would like you to indent your tags so that it's easier for you to see what's going on. And now in the paste list, we have an, a second unordered list nested in the first one. And in here we have person. And from here, whatever that is. And then we close our paste list item. And after the closing tag, we're going to add the tarts, which is the last list item. And one feature of brackets I really like, actually, um, to take advantage of, if you hover over a tag, it's going to show you the opening or closing tag. And I think this is actually very helpful. So now I can see, I open my list item here, and my UL, my second UL, is inside the first one, right? So um, I'll bring this back up just a second here. Did I save this? All right, and then um, you're looking for something looking like so, the nested list. And let me bring back the code for you as a reference. So it's easy to make a mistake by closing the tag not in the right place. So just pay attention to what opens where 
and what the clause was saying. Okay? So this, the, that's the last demo for today. We're going to leave it here. And you have 10 minutes to just maybe practice or upload your file, finish up. And I will see you on Wednesday or Thursday. And I think we're, now we're in here, for the rest, hopefully for the rest of the quarter. I know there are a lot of problems with machines that I'm talking need about, it, but we're doing better today than last week, right? Question for me? Okay, good. Okay. So. Yeah, that was my recording. So, what kind of spines do they see which one is the one